Hello everyone. Uh, today I'm gonna showcase a replay where I played against Runic, uh, and obviously I won the duel. But the way I won the duel is a little bit uh, weird, I guess. So you will see what I mean when I showcase the uh, replay. So before we before I show the replay, I just wanna say that um, I was playing a go second variation of Dragonity. But I forgot I was playing a go second variation because I'm so used to playing the other variation and also I usually hate playing the go second variation because it's not really that fun. But in this particular case I like uh, edited the deck a little bit so I, I tried to test it and the first duel that I got when I tried to test it is against this guy who played uh, Runic. So I'm just gonna showcase real quick uh, his deck. So. He was playing two Amano Iwato and uh, a bunch of uh, floodgates, of course, which is standard, I guess, in runic decks. However, w what is not standard is to see Pot of Desires, I guess, and maybe even Duality. Yeah? I don't know. So this, I think, was before this last ban list, I assume, because he has three, and this says that. Uh, it is semi-limited, so yeah, I think this uh, replay was uh, before the last ban list, so yeah. I don't know why he was playing Pot of Desires. I thought that you didn't want to banish all your runic cards, I guess, but whatever. Anyway, so I'm not really knowledgeable about runic because I hate that deck and I even dis uh, disassembled all my runic cards. So yeah, uh, let's hop into the uh, replay. I will showcase my deck at the end of the video, of course, don't worry about it. So, like I said, so I was going, uh, uh, I was going first in this uh, replay, but uh, like I said, I was playing a go second uh, variation, but I forgot that I was playing a go second variation. So when I won the coin toss, I immediately clicked out of habit on uh, going first. So yeah, thankfully for us, our hand was not really uh, optimized to deal like to go second. So it worked out anyway. So yeah, so here I, we just ended up using uh, Gold Sarcophagus in our hand to uh, get access to uh, Remus with Tempest. And since we have Gizarmi and Baby Rock in our hand, I already knew that I can go into the Crystal Wing uh, Synchro Dragon combo line uh, immediately. Because here I can uh, Synchro Summon Crystal Wing on the 5th Summon without any problems. So I went for it. Of course... Because I was playing against Runic, Crystal Wing doesn't really do anything, basically. So, uh, yeah, especially if uh, they have Amano Iwato. So, yeah. So, here I'm just going through uh, the usual combo, just putting Crystal Wing on the field. Normal summoning gives army to extend, of course. And we have, like, a lot of, like, resources already in the uh, in the graveyard. We dumped the Strudo uh, earlier, and... During this whole combo, I was thinking if I'm just gonna use this Trudo to get uh, to get access to uh, Hot Red Dragon Arkfin Abyss, but then I opted against it because I didn't I didn't want to uh, commit too much resources. So I'm just gonna go into a very standard combo line to put up a decent end board uh, that can play around a lot of stuff basically. So yeah. So I could have just went into uh, Arkfin Abyss, but uh, yeah, I opted to go into an end board that can deal with uh, as many monster effects as possible. That was my idea for this combo. So I'm just gonna put up like Arid Bear, Crystal Wing, with a Boro Load Savage Dragon, of course, because Savage Dragon is really good to have at any uh, in any combo, basically. And Heretic Seal, of course, is good on the opponent's turn if you can. Uh, if you can disrupt them like on their normal summon basically so yeah because i'm going first i didn't know at the time i was playing against runic so yeah so here i'm just extending the combo like putting up my end board as usual i opted to uh, go into uh, seals and arid bear like i said i did not want to commit too much for now so i'm just gonna put uh, Boral Lord, Savage Dragon, and Arid Bear, and that's it, with an Ash in my hand, like, ju just a second, like, as we finish the combo, I'm just gonna pause real quick, 
So if we look at the board right now, like we have decent disruptions. We have two monster effect negation, one that destroys and one that banishes. So we can even deny resources, dependent on the deck that we could play against. We have Borderload Savage Dragon and we have Seals with an Ash in our hand. So our end board and our like advantage is really good here. Like this is not a bad board by any means, right? So yeah. And like I said, since I am first, I still don't know what I'm playing against. And the reason why I went full combo after like Crystal Wing is because their their uh, their board did not light up once. So I knew that they did not have any like hand traps or anything. So that's why I went full combo for, with this. So yeah. So now I'm just gonna pass turn, and of course the first thing they do is summon Amano Iwato, I think. And of course. This literally makes my whole board meaningless, basically, and worthless. Like, my board is as good as having, like, uh, a board full of normal monsters, basically. So here he's just gonna go through his whole runic uh, play, and he's gonna activate Desire. So the reason here uh, why I did not Ash Desires, of course, is because Amano Iwato is on the field, and for those who don't know how Amano Iwato works, is that as long as he is on the field, no monster effect can be activated, period. Not just on the field, like anywhere. Like, I cannot activate monster effects anywhere. I cannot even attempt to activate anything. Like, here, for example, I cannot attempt to activate Heretic Seal to bounce back Imano Iwato or something, you know. It's impossible. I, I, I just cannot activate any monster effects. That's why, like, I did not Ash Desire, because I literally couldn't, basically. So, uh, here he's just banishing my cards, nothing unusual for Runic, so he's gonna recycle like two cards. And here he he put like five cards in the back row, which told me two things. He told, this literally told me that he knew that I was gonna be able to use Heretic Seal basically at the end phase, and he also was afraid that... Uh, I was gonna OTK him like uh, next turn if he didn't get uh, his uh, his runic cards on the field basically. So yeah, I, I mean he knew what I was gonna do basically because he knew the interaction between Amano Iwato, the end phase, and Hiratic Seal. So this told me at least this player knows a little bit of uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, I guess. So Amano Iwato goes to his hand first, then I can activate my seals to get rid of his field spell. And because I got rid of his field spell, any runic card in his hand is uh, dead. So it cannot be activated, of course. He can only use his five cards uh, in the back row to try and survive, and then on the next turn he, he's gonna try to deck me out, basically. So that was the idea. So now, uh, of course, I ended up drawing the uh, Dark Ru Ruler no more, but since I'm playing against runic, this card is dead, so immediately I'm just gonna activate... Uh, Ravine to get rid of uh, this card and try to get some uh, combo starter or extender, but uh, he ended up activating his uh, rivalry of warlords. Unfortunately for him, all my cards are dragon like on the field, all my monsters, I should say. So this does not affect me uh, so much. And uh, the good thing about dragonity combos, like after turn one, is that you don't really need your wing beasts. Your monsters, like your dragon monsters, are enough to win you the game, basically. So, rivalry is not really that much of a problem, for now. Unless he, like, uh, activates there can only be one, then we are, in, we are in trouble. So here, I opted to just go in, into battle phase immediately to try and force his uh, runic uh, spell cards to activate, basically. So, he activates uh, runic tip, I think, which I immediately ash because... I don't want him to get any more advantages for his next turn because I know at, some, at a certain point he's gonna summon a card and uh, here I make my first mistake so he reactivates slumbers to special summon uh, like one of his uh, fusions and I was debating whether or not to uh, negate this right because if I can if I can negate this and then he doesn't have any other runic cards to activate then I could win the game right here right However, I was afraid of the other runic uh, quick spell card that can negate the effect of a uh, effect monster. I think it's called freezing something. I forgot the, the name. 
But uh, yeah, so I was afraid that if I chain my Boral Savage uh, Dragon to negate this, he's gonna chain the other Runic card. So I opted to wait and just let him summon. And then once he summoned, I realized, okay, he let the chain resolve. And I, I realized that, uh, oh, wait a second, he still has Amano Iwato in his hand. So on his turn, he's just gonna summon Amano Iwato and he will just either deck me out or get rid of my Borolo Savage Dragon, right? Because I cannot activate Borolo Savage Dragon like on his turn if he has Amano Iwato out. So I realized that really very, very late. So this is why the correct play in hindsight is that I should have just negated that basically because now I have a Borolo Savage Dragon on the field with two counters, but I will never get the the opportunity to use it so yeah that was a misplay basically so I just end up like getting rid of his uh, I think uh, Munin yeah and just attack for a little bit of damage and here I make my second mistake uh, by activating Destrudo uh, and targeting my Remus to just special summon uh, Destrudo and my reasoning for this play was uh, to try and uh, summon Destrudo and then with Remus and Destrudo go into seals. However, again, I was not paying attention because I forgot that I already used my second seal uh, last turn. So I thought I still had one seal in the extra deck. Of course, I should have just opened the extra deck to uh, check before I go into the play, but the reason why I did this play like so fast is because Usually I don't play this uh, deck like I said before I I hate playing the co second variation because it's not really that fun and uh, uh, The other reason why is because usually when I play the regular version of Dragonity I don't really end up on the second seal on the board. I I prefer to go into like a, a Hot red dragon and like uh, another card uh, usually like hope hamburger so I, I, I leave my second seal for like as a follow-up for like uh, next turns basically so I don't usually summon my second seal this is why I like went into autopilot and just summon my Destrudo to try and go into my second seal of course I realized I didn't have it so yeah I guess Destrudo is here to stay as a body I guess but this doesn't matter against Runic anyway so yeah my opponent just summoned Amano Watu again my whole board is literally just worthless he goes into his combo, he's gonna banish a lot of cards, so right now we are at 16 cards, here he ended up banishing, holy shit, a lot of cards. Of course, this is what I was afraid of, so he ended up uh, using his Freezing uh, Curses, this is the name of the card, so Freezing, freezing Curses, so he used freezing, freezing Curses on my Border Savage Dragon, so literally I got no value out of this card. So yeah, this was a mistake, so I already made two big mistakes but you will see even with those two big mistakes I still win the game uh, because of one thing that is really interesting about Runic so the thing with Runic is that their banish effect can only be used if they can banish exactly the amount of card that is uh, mentioned in the card basically so unless they can banish the exact number of cards that the uh, those quick spell cards state they cannot activate their cards right and right now I have three cards left which will go down to two after I go uh, into my uh, draw phase so it's very hard for them to actually deck me out in this uh, in this particular case unless they have the exact cards that can exactly banish two cards basically so I knew that of course and also I knew that since I I just have like a Borolo Savage Dragon on the field that literally does nothing uh, and this Crystal Wing does nothing against Runic so the first thing I'm gonna do in the main phase since I am the turn player is to immediately exceed summon these exceed uh, overlay like these two into uh, Hope Harbinger because Hope Harbinger is really good against Runic because it can negate the uh, activation or effect of a spell card basically not only that, it's also gonna suck it and put it like as an Xyz material, which is really good against Runic because I'm gonna deny resources. However, I think my opponent forgot that Hope Harbinger can uh, negate the uh, spell effects on top of the activation because 
I don't know why you're gonna see my opponent decided to uh, special summon uh, Hugin, activate the effect of Hugin, and chain to it the effect of his uh, spell for some reason. And he didn't chain anything else, so now that I got uh, priority, I immediately went into uh, activating my Hope Harbinger to negate the fountain and uh, suck it as material. So here two things, either my opponent forgot to chain something, or he did not ha have anything to chain, or he did not know that my Hope Harbinger can negate spell effects on top of the activation. So I don't know what he was thinking, so I, I, I did not let that slip of course, so I was just uh, gonna negate that and suck the fountain, and of course because I sucked the fountain uh, and have it as a exceed material, now, the other card, which I know is Amano Iwato, uh, is useless, basically, because now all I have to worry about is this set card, basically, right? So, here I'm just gonna activate Armagram and uh, negate Hugin. Uh, I don't even know what Hugin does, I'm just gonna negate it with Armagram. I'm gonna attack with the Arid Bear first to destroy and banish this card and uh, play around any other card that he can activate. So here I'm just gonna attack and I thought he's gonna like flip another floodgate or something like I don't know what he had in the back row but uh, apparently it was not relevant to this tool so yeah. So this this game felt re really weird like a runic player like activating and resolving like Pot of Desire uh, using Amano Iwato and failing to deck me out basically but because I only had two cards left in the deck uh, I ended up using my Boral Savage Dragon but uh, I should say I ended up summoning Boral Lord Savage Dragon but I did not use its effects once and I did a bunch of mistakes and the other runner player also did like a big oopsie by like not block chaining chain blocking like the effect of Fountain or at least using the effect of Fountain earlier or something so yeah that felt really weird, but that just go to showcase that even against Runic with Floodgates, you can actually win with Dragonity if you know, uh, like, to save up on your resources and, like, uh, summon the correct monsters at the correct time, basically, and use your effects at the correct time to uh, actually OTK them before they deck you out, basically. So, yeah. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, commentary over this uh, replay. If you have any questions about the uh, plays I made and other potential plays that maybe I did not see or uh, uh, you have any other commentary, feel free to leave it in uh, the comment section below. So I'm just going to showcase the deck real quick. This is like the uh, my own variation of co-second deck basically. By I play like a triple uh, whirlwind and triple droplet because I play the uh, black rose dragon. Uh, I play three of these because you know you, you want to see them together basically in your opening hand because you can what you can do is activate whirlwind and then if they chain something to negate it you can chain your droplet send your whirlwind that you activated uh, to the graveyard so now you can just uh, resolve uh, whirlwind uh, normally basically right and negate their monster at the same time so. Yeah, and of course I play like the Cosmic for Runic, uh, Dark Ruler no more, just to wipe the board and help me resolve Warwind, because Warwind can be easily like stopped as a go second card, because, you know, like, usually if you go second, the first player is has already put up a board with Disruption anyway, so you need cards that help you resolve Warwind, that's why I play like Dar Dark Ruler no more and uh, drop it. So yeah, and the rest of the engine is basically the same. I play two Gizarmi here because, uh, you know, one is for using Whirlwind and the other is just as an extender, I guess. And the rest is basically the same. Even the extra deck is basically the same, except that I took off the uh, Boral Sword Dragon for uh, Black Rose Dragon. That's it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this uh, live commentary basically on the replay. Uh, if you guys didn't like this, uh, just please let me know so I can try to uh, change things up for the next video basically so yeah uh, please leave a like or a dislike if you didn't like it but please tell me why you disliked it in the comment section so I can do better next time and don't forget to subscribe and see you later